Welcome to this introductory webinar for the UK's Food Waste Reduction Roadmap. Today we'll be looking at, first of all, the case for food waste reduction, so why this topic matters. I'll share where the roadmap comes from and what its goals are. We'll look at the best practice approach for businesses that commit to the roadmap of Target Measure Act. And finally, I'll share how you can get involved. So each year in the UK, we waste just under 10 million tonnes of food, which is around a quarter of, of all the food that we produce. And that's actually come down by around a quarter since its peak in, in 2007, which is obviously really good progress, but there is, is clearly a long way to go. And you can see how that breaks down across sectors here. So the, the big number that jumps out there is obviously the 70% of food waste that happens in, in households. So any solution to tackle food waste needs to look at how we can impact and influence um, consumer um, food waste. Uh, you can also see how it breaks down across the other sectors here. So the next biggest um, chunk of food waste comes from food manufacturing, followed by hospitality and food service, and finally retail. But you can't really compare um, across sectors and say one sector is doing better than another because it's got a lower food waste percentage because we know um, that each sector faces different challenges and has different opportunities for food waste reduction. Also, we know that where food waste is manifested is not necessarily where it was caused. So, um, you know, only really by, by working together across the supply chain, across sectors, are we gonna be able to fundamentally tackle food waste. Okay, so what about uh, a sort of financial value to food waste? So um, RAP's research shows that for every tonne of food waste that is prevented in food manufacturing, for example, the average saving is, is £1,200. And that takes into account a range of, of hidden costs as well. So there, there are the more obvious costs or the, the, the tip of the iceberg, things like um, the waste management costs. But there's also the material costs, plus um, obviously all the value that's put into that food by moving it and transforming it and adding value to it across the supply chain you know which which is things like the the labor costs and the energy costs and maybe the water costs and so on that's put into that food um, before it ends up getting getting wasted so we know there's there's a, a good prize to go after but obviously to go after that you have to invest in food waste reduction activities and that might be in things like um, educating people measurement, um, process change, innovation, and, and so on. So what kind of return on investment can you expect? Um, so a survey from a few years ago um, that RAP was involved in, um, led, I think, by the World Resources Institute, looked at 1,200 business sites across 17 different countries. And it found that for almost all of those sites, um, there was a positive return on investment in terms of food waste reduction activities with over half of them seeing at least a 14-fold return on investment or, or, or greater. So a very compelling business case there. Now, obviously, the return you get will, will depend on what your sector is, what your opportunities for food waste reduction are, where you are on the journey, and, and so on. Um, but nevertheless, there is a strong business case to, to go after this. So as well as the economic case, there's also obviously an environmental impact from food waste. And a, a nice statistic to put this into perspective, um, I think the World Resources Institute came up with this a few years ago, and, and they found that if you were to rank every country based on its greenhouse gas emissions, and you were to put food waste amongst them, it would actually be the third large emitter of greenhouse gases behind China and, and the US. So that shows just how big an impact it, it actually has environmentally. And that goes right the way from obviously growing the food in the first place and the environmental cost of that, given you're going to end up wasting that food, um, all the way through to the impact from um, disposal of that food. And the final thing I wanted to highlight on this slide is um, back in December 2018, um, DEFRA published uh, the, the Waste and Resources Strategy for, for England. And there was a whole chapter in that on, on food waste. Uh, and they, they, the government basically committed in that to conducting a consultation on mandatory reporting of food waste by businesses of an appropriate size in England. Uh, and that, that has been pushed back a few times um, because of other circumstances, but um, the government is committed to doing that consultation. So obviously um, looking, you know, getting ahead of the curve and actually building your capabilities before that comes in would be a good idea, um, as would 
getting the reputational benefit of doing so voluntarily before that becomes mandatory again would be a very um, good idea. And one thing that's clear from from um, the consultation from that report is that that the definitions and the metrics that will be used for food waste reporting will align with the food waste reduction roadmap. So the catalyst for the roadmap came in 2015 when the UN published its sustainable development goals. And there were a set of 17 different um, goals um, covering a wide range of, of sort of ethical and environmental areas. In particular, goal 12 looked at sustainable um, consumption and production of food. And there are a number of targets within that. And the target that pertains to food waste is target 12.3, so SDG 12.3. And you can see it, see it here on the slide. So it says by 2030, the goal is to halve per capita global food waste at the retail and consumer levels and reduce food losses along the production and supply chains, including post-harvest losses. And the way that's really been interpreted is to essentially halve food waste per capita by 2030. So that's something that the UK has signed up to um, along with other nations. Um, but it was realized off the back of that, that there wasn't actually a, an agreed way of how to measure and report on, on food waste. So what metrics should be used. And in fact, there wasn't even agreement about, around what the definition of food waste is. So of course, it's going to be very challenging to track progress towards that target if there isn't consistency, um, you know, across the industry or even, you know, or, or globally, of course. So to try and tackle this, a number of organizations got together back in 2016. Uh, so this was led by the World Resources Institute, um, RAP was involved, the Consumer Goods Forum was involved, the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization was involved, and a number of other organizations. And what we did was create for the first time a global standard for how to measure and report on food waste called the Food Loss and Waste Accounting and Reporting Standard. Um, and this is a really um, great document that gives you a framework for, and, and importantly, a consistent language for how to report on that food waste so that your data can be properly interpreted by those who, who, who look at it. So, um, but it's flexible to take account of different um, entities that might report, whether that's businesses or governments, different sectors and, and so on. So that was the first time that was published. And then what RAP did was work with IGD, so the Institute of Grocery Distribution uh, in the UK um, across 2017 and 2018, we did our own consultation with the industry looking at how can we take those global principles and apply them in the UK and make it really easy for businesses to get going on the journey. So the Food Loss and Waste Standard is 160 plus you know, technical pages and we wanted to just to make it really, really easy for businesses to, to, to make a start on, on the food waste reduction journey. So that led to the creation of the roadmap and along with the roadmap, a whole suite of tools and guidance to help different sectors and help the industry as a whole to, to, to move on with their food waste reduction um, uh, journey. When businesses sign up to the roadmap, we ask them to commit to target measure and act on their food waste, as you can see by, by the logo in the top right. So let, let's unpack that and what, what do we mean by that? So first of all, in terms of targets, what we ask businesses to do is to adopt a food waste reduction target for their own operations. Now, the overall goal for the, the roadmap as a whole is obviously SDG 12.3, so it's to halve food waste um, by 2030. And a lot of businesses have adopted that as their target, a 50% reduction in food waste by 2030. But you don't have to set that as your target. You can set a different target that is tailored to your particular business. It could be a one year rolling target or it could be a target all the way to 2030 or something in between. Um, all we ask for is that it's an ambitious target for your own operations um, because we found that having an ambitious target is key to actually driving action. Um, in terms of measure, we ask businesses to obviously measure their food waste in a consistent way. And when we say a consistent way, we mean in a way that aligns with that global food loss and waste standard. Uh, and to share what they've learned. So to help facilitate that, we've created a, a template, simple template um, to capture food waste metrics in a consistent way using the, a consistent set of definitions. Uh, and in terms of reporting that, so we ask businesses to, at a minimum, share that with RAP on an annual basis. 
and that enables Wrap to obviously check that you've, you've followed this process correctly, um, to be able to sense check your data um, and, and feedback where we see any, any issues. Uh, and also to aggregate that data with everyone else's data so that we can track at a high level how the UK is doing towards these targets. But best practice is to publicly report your data and we expect businesses to work towards this. And obviously when mandatory reporting comes in, that will be the case anyway. So businesses should be looking to be as transparent as possible and to report their data, for example, through, through case studies in CSR reports or using some of the templates that we've created on, on their own website or through other, other means such as the Food Waste Atlas, for example, which is a public database of food waste data. And finally, in terms of Target Measure Act, there, there's ACT, which is obviously the, the most important thing, um, but it's, it's contingent on the preceding two steps. So when we say ACT, we're looking for businesses to take action, first of all, to, to reduce their own food waste. So to reduce food waste in their own operations and to, to, to be hitting their, their targets. And that will obviously depend on what their opportunities are. So that will be based on their own hotspots and um, root causes that they uncover as they look into their food waste data. Um, secondly, as well as acting in your own operations, um, you know, as we mentioned earlier, food waste gets shifted across the supply chain sometimes by decisions in different parts of the chain. So we, we're looking for businesses to work together with their suppliers uh, and with their customers to look across this, the end-to-end -end supply chain and look at how they can take joint actions to reduce end-to-end -end food waste. And finally, as we mentioned, even if we were to take 100% of food waste out of the rest of the supply chain, um, we still wouldn't hit SDG 12.3 unless we tackle the 70% of it, which is in, in households. So we expect businesses to look at how can they impact or influence um, consumers in terms of reducing food waste. And there's a variety of ways you can do that, even if you are several stages back from a, a touch point with a consumer. So that might be looking at things like best practice with um, food, food labeling um, or storage guidance, for example, um, best before dates and so on. It could be looking at um, you know, packaging innovations to extend shelf life. It could be looking at educating consumers, so getting behind some of the campaigns that RAP runs, for example. Um, it could even be about educating your own staff. So RAP can, has resources to run internal campaigns, for example, to raise awareness of food waste and the importance of food waste reduction, not just at work, but actually at home as well. And that could be a good way of engaging consumers through your, your own staff. So I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail on this webinar on the um, food waste reporting template. There'll be another webinar that covers that, which you can find on RAP's website. But just very briefly, what are the kind of key metrics? What are the KPIs we expect businesses to report? So um, in, in summary, um, first of all, there is the overall food waste they generate in tons. And we expect this to be reported on, on an annual basis. So that will be across, across a year. We ask for that to be in tons because that's a consistent measure that can then be aggregated with other businesses across the industry. Uh, secondly, and, and the more important measure for individual businesses is what is that food waste as a percentage of all of the food that you produce or you handle as a business across the year. Uh, and that's a better reflection of your actual performance because the overall food waste and tonnage um, partly reflects the scale, scale or the size of a business. So if a business you know, let's say doubles in size between now and 2030, you might expect their food waste tonnage to actually increase. But if they're wasting a lower percentage of the food that they handle or produce, then that is still progress towards their target. That's still a, a good thing. Uh, as well as the overall food waste and tonnage, we ask for that to be broken down by destination. Not all destinations are, are equal. And it's actually the destinations uh, that define what food waste is for, for the roadmap and for the food loss and waste standard. Uh, and I'll go into that in more detail on the, on the next slide. Uh, and as well as breaking it down by, by food waste destination, we also ask for what other destinations are businesses sending food to to avoid it going to food waste. And again, I'll explain a little bit more about those on the next slide. This is an extract from the Excel data capture sheet. And again, if you want to see this in more detail, you can download the, the data capture sheet from RAP's website and also view a webinar which will step you through the process of how to complete that on an annual basis.
This is a hierarchy of um, destinations where you can send food to if you're not able to sell it through your primary market, for example. Uh, and it goes from most preferable destination at the top down to least preferable destination at the bottom. And that's based on the valorization of the food, the value you get back from sending it to that particular destination, uh, and also the environmental impact of sending it to, to that destination. And as you can see, anything above the dashed line actually counts as preventing food waste. So that's not a food waste destination, whereas anything below the line um, does count as a food waste destination. So if we look at, first of all, at the, um, the options below the line, you can see, although all of them count as food waste, there's still a hierarchy within that. So, you know, right at the bottom of the list, um, you know, so the, the, the worst routes would be, for example, waste, things like waste to sewer um, or waste to landfill, for example. Um, much better um, food waste destination would be, let's say, anaerobic digestion at the top of the list, based on the value you get back from that. Um, but nevertheless, that still counts as a food waste destination. And we ask for that to be, you know, as I say, food waste to be reported by destination because they're not, not all equal. So actually, even if you're not able to prevent food from being wasted, you could still potentially move it up the hierarchy. Looking above the line then at food waste prevention. So the, the priority for food, if you can't sell it through your normal markets, would always be to, to keep it in the human food supply chain, which is what its original tension was through redistribution to, to, to people. And that can be either through charitable means or through commercial means. Um, but the priority is always redistribution. Um, failing that, it would be to send, um, send the, the food to, to, to animal feed. Um, and that again, counts as a as food waste prevention because it displaces food that would otherwise have been grown for that purpose. And the, and the final option in terms of prevention of food waste would be biomaterial processing, for example. So converting food products into various high value industrial products. So all of those would count as food waste avoidance if you're sending food there to avoid it going to one of the other destinations below the line. And again, we ask for your, your, on your food waste report for any of those destinations to be listed as well in terms of how much food you're sending there. This is a graphic of the roadmap itself. Uh, and it goes from September 2018 when the roadmap launched right through to 2030 when RAP will be reporting on the UK's progress against SDG 12.3. And there's a number of milestones um, for the industry as a whole and where we expect the industry to be. So I'm not going to read through all of these. Um, obviously, look at, you know, feel free to pause the webinar and look at these um, you know, at your leisure in more detail. Um, but just to say, you know, just to pick out a couple of things. So, you know, one of our earliest milestones was a year after the roadmap launched in September 2019 to have all large retailers and 50% of other large food businesses um, implementing Target Measure and Act. And our goal is by 2026 to have 100% of large food businesses in the UK um, doing so, implementing Target Measure Act. In addition to that, we've got milestones on things like whole chain food waste reduction plans, which are our mechanism for getting businesses to work together across the supply chain to tackle food waste fundamentally. These are logos of uh, just some of the over 200, currently over 220 businesses that have committed to the food waste reduction roadmap. And you can see that's right across sectors. So in terms of retailers, hospitality and food service businesses, which incorporate hotels, restaurants, contract caterers, and so on, right through to you know, a large group of food manufacturers. So you know, we've made really good progress, but as I say, there's still a, a long way to go. So if you're not on this list, please do sign up. Um, the logos are, are deliberately small um, because it's a moving target. So if you want to see the actual live list of who signed up, please do visit our website. We keep a live list there of businesses that have both committed to the roadmap and those who have implemented Target Measure Act. And it's worth saying that, you know, over 170 businesses have implemented Target Measure Act currently. Uh, and the turnover, combined turnover of those businesses is over 230 billion pounds, and that represents 56% or so of the overall turnover of the UK food manufacturing, retail and hospitality and food service sectors. So, you know, we've got over half of the total turnover of those sectors represented by their commitments to the roadmap. 
So in, in summary, what are the benefits of committing to the food waste reduction roadmap? So first of all, um, it gives you confidence that you're meeting what has become a global standard for how to measure and report on, on food waste. So you're not having to, to reinvent the wheel. Um, you're aligning yourself with what businesses are doing across your sector, across the UK, and indeed um, globally. Secondly, it unlocks the ability to use all of the free tools, templates, and guidance that's available on RAP's website. Um, now that's available, that's, that's open access, um, that's obviously available to everyone, but unless you're following this process, it won't be of, of, much, of much benefit. Thirdly, um, by following the same process, um, you'll be able to benchmark yourself against other businesses that publish their data. So you'll be able to actually compare yourself and, and look for, for ways to, to, to improve. At the same time, you'll be able to learn lessons from others who use the same standard as they publish case studies. And, and are more transparent about the actions they're taking. You get public recognition for your commitment to reduce food waste. So as I've already mentioned, we maintain a live list on our website of all businesses that have committed. So you'll get listed on the website, you'll get listed in our sort of annual progress reports as well. Um, and we're happy to support other communications that you may want to, to take as well individually within your own business to, you know, through your social media channels, for example, to talk about your commitment in terms of reducing food waste. It gets you ahead of potential legislation that's coming down the line in terms of mandatory reporting of food waste that I've already discussed. And finally, there's support for large businesses that commit. And the way that will be primarily delivered is, is through our website. So through the free resources on our website that we do add to over time, the case studies that we put out on the website uh, and we also have a support email that you'll be able to send any questions to as well. Uh, and in, in addition to that, there's a mechanism to ask you for your data on an annual basis and to sense check that data as well. And then obviously to give you recognition for when you've actually implemented. So as well as that public um, list of businesses that have committed to the roadmap, there's also a public list of implementers as well. You can find um, further resources uh, that I've talked about today. Um, for example, the data capture sheet, um, more than 50 case studies of businesses that have publicly reported their data and shared their, their targets and the actions they're taking to reduce food waste um, as inspiration, uh, an FAQ, um, our progress reports, the list of businesses that have committed, and many more um, guides, sector-specific guidance as well, webinars and so on, on our website. You can see the link up there. That's open access, so please do go and check that out. And finally, in terms of next steps, so to commit to the roadmap, um, there's a one-page form that we ask businesses to sign, uh, to get signed at board level, just so we know it's got that sort of senior level backing within the business. Um, there's no cost, I should should say, to the roadmap. There's no fee for, for joining the roadmap. Um, but obviously, we ask you to commit sufficient resource to actually implementing Target Measure Act. So there's a one-page form. It's on the website. You can download it. So fill that in and send it back to our support email. So that's the first and, and really key next step. Following that, you'll be looking to implement Target Measure Act. So that would be completing the data capture sheet on the website on an annual basis. Uh, and setting up a, a you know a baseline year of reporting, and obviously following that, you know we would encourage you to be public with your data and your learnings uh, by doing things like publishing case studies. And we've got again templates to help you publish case studies, either through RAP or you know individually on your own website as well. Thanks very much for listening. Um, so you can see, um, again, just as a, a reminder, our website address there, if you haven't already got that, where you can find this webinar, other webinars and, and, and all the guidance I've talked about. Our support email is there as well if you have any questions. Um, that's all for this webinar. Thank you very much for listening and we look forward to supporting you on your food waste reduction journey.